I know that, but I'm not the boss. Okay, so uh, you're not going to be on right at the very beginning, but uh, I'll introduce you and then you'll come on, okay? John McCabe. Welcome to the show. And we are live. Thanks for joining us on the John A. McCabe show. And uh, if you haven't done so already, please like, share, and comment on this uh, webcast. Today is Friday. Anything goes. As you can tell, I'm sitting at the beach. It's, uh, in case you don't know, it's actually a beach in Hawaii. I just jetted out there for the evening and I just wanted to do the show live from the beaches of Hawaii. I'm sitting with my trusty Corona. I'm ready to uh, get into beach mode for the weekend and see what everyone has to talk about. I got a couple of great guests coming on today, actually, uh, on the John A. McCabe show. The show is geared towards entrepreneurship, living the lifestyle you've always dreamed, uh, connecting with uh, with your with friends, family, and uh, just growing your business so that you too can accelerate your authority and live whatever life dream that you actually have. And today our first guest actually does that. He, for many years, I actually met this individual uh, when I went on vacation in Belize for two weeks and uh, right away we connected. He's uh, from Canada as well and he's been chasing his dream for a long time and he's actually been living it for, uh, you know, probably 10, 10 to 20 years. I'm not sure exactly how long he's been doing it, but he's actually going to uh, let us know uh, what life is like when you actually live your dream. And uh, so without further ado, I'm just going to do a quick transition here and then we're going to get right into my first guest. And then uh, for the second half of the segment, I've got a second guest who's going to talk about uh, their new book that's coming out, uh, Passion 365, talking about uh, relationships, uh, having a solid relationship uh, in their life. So just hold on one sec and I'll be right back with... Uh, Paul Germain. Hey, Paul, how you doing? Hey, I'm amazing. How are you today? I'm doing excellent, man. I'm doing excellent. So, I. Uh, I'll try not to stare down on my computer. Uh, for those of you who just joined me uh, uh, today, again, my uh, Margaret is no longer helping me. She's uh, back doing uh, her regular job, so she's off hiatus. So I'm actually trying to control things at the same time as uh, host the show. So sometimes I end up looking down on my computer instead of looking up at the camera. So I'll do my very best to stay focused on the camera. And uh, I don't have a screen going where I can actually see Paul other than on my laptop. So the odd time I just maybe look down uh, to make sure the shot's still going and to make sure Paul's still on. And that's where I actually have the Facebook running live as well. So Paul German, 
not Jermaine. Paul German, welcome I'm, to the show, I'm, my friend. I'm, I'm, it's been a long time. Hey, it's been a super long time. I know you're in Hawaii, so I thought I'd start off with a nice Corona because that's always the, the beer of the beach, right? Exactly. You've got one going as well. So cheers to you, that's for sure. Cheers, my friend. So, um, yeah, Paul and I uh, actually met when I was on a two-week holiday in Belize with my friend Jeff, uh, who's now actually, I don't know if you know this, Paul, Jeff is living in the Philippines. He married a girl from the Oh, no way. That's amazing. And instead of uh, him uh, moving her up here, he decided to leave his job and live off his investments and move to the Philippines and be with his wife. And they're expecting their first baby in uh, December. So uh, the plan is I'm looking to head down in December uh, when their firstborn child is uh, coming into the world. So I'm sure you remember Jeff from uh, our time in Belize, but uh, let's let's talk about you, Paul. Let's uh, talk about uh, sort of how you ended up in Belize and now you're in Costa Rica. And prior to that, I think you were in, in, in adventure sports or adventure touring. So just tell people a little about uh, the backstory of Paul Germain, sort of your origin story. Well, my origin story, yeah, it's, I'm, I'm definitely Canadian. I, I've, I've been pretty lucky, I suppose, uh, as, as many people I've met along the way uh, to to grow up in different places. My mom and dad brought me to Brazil a couple times as I was growing up, so I caught that that whole flair for traveling and cultures and languages and things, and uh, that's led me to moving across Canada, doing a lot of different things. And, and exactly as you said, I, I started out in the outdoor adventure tourism business when I was about 16 years old and, and never really looked back. And I've been able to make a, a living doing times as I was growing up. So I all that, sorts of things from that, all over the that board in, in that whole flair of tourism for tra- business. You know, I, I was kayak guiding and, and, and mountaineering and all sorts of stuff out in Vancouver, Vancouver which led to languages and things. And uh, to that's all led me to moving and running business and doing a lot of different things. And, 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 you know, and exactly kinda, as you it said, I, I, from there. I started out in so, the outdoor uh, adventure tourism business when I was about 16 years old and never really looked back. When the housing market went crazy in Vancouver, as it still is. Yeah. Um, two, my wife at the time, Callie, two of us decided that two adventure guides weren't going to be able to afford a 600% overinflated house. So we started looking at options offshore. Um, obviously, uh, it wasn't a huge trend at that time, but lots of people doing it. And we ended up in St. Lucia running some resorts, managing a resort there for a while. And we're able to move our way through the British Virgin Islands and then into Belize. Um, Belize got its talons in us, if, if I can say that. And, uh, and it was absolutely fantastic. We, uh, we hooked up with one resort offshore, about a mile and a half offshore, or sorry, an hour and a half boat ride offshore, rather, called Turnoff Island Lodge. And, and that was the end of that. We ran resorts for 15 years, and, and uh, all sorts of skill bases came from there. But, you know, in the tourism business and the travel business, you, you have to be a jack of all trades. You've got to do everything. And that, that's what's really allowed us or allowed me to, to be able to move to different places and kind of guide my own life versus being guided by others, if you will, and and not having choices, right? Yeah, so all the people that are in the corporate America that just, you know, they hate their job or they, you know, they just hate getting up every day to go to work or, you know, at some point in time, you got to step back and think about, well, why am I doing all this? Like, what is life truly about? It's it's not about, you know, living somebody else's dream uh, who is the, you know, the owner or the CEO of that company. It's about you know, living my own dream and how can I actually live my own dream and do what I want to do and still earn a living and be very happy because I'm sure uh, there's one thing I know about you, Paul, you're an extremely happy person. I don't, I don't think I've ever seen you sad or upset <laughs> or, I mean, you're living in paradise. You're doing exactly what you love to do. You love people. You love connecting with people. And I think the job that you actually uh, are doing and just enables you to do that on an ongoing basis. Well, you know, and thank you, and that, that's, that's what I try to present in my life on a daily basis, right, because what's lucky about what I get to do is that I get a choice, and I get to choose my direction. Of course, it's not all, you know, beautiful roses and all that stuff. There's always the stresses of what, what we need to do in life to create revenue to, to allow ourselves to do the things we love, but, but you said it right, and I think we were talking before the show for a little bit how one of the things that I don't like hearing as I go around the world and meet people and do talks on moving offshore and other different things is people who feel they can't do anything about the life that they get up to daily and don't like right? and say they don't like. I'm not saying, and you're not saying by any means, and I don't think anybody listening would say, 
that if you love the corporate world and you're in that and you enjoy that thoroughly and it satisfies your goals, then you should be completely doing that as much as you want to do that. That's fantastic. So don't get me wrong there. But if you wake up every morning, feel like you're stuck, say, I don't like this, I hate this, I can't believe I'm doing this, you're not motivated to go to work and do other things, and that obviously affects other parts of your life, then then you have the option to certainly take a chance, take a look at things, and make a plan. And you know, you never know what, what kind of alternative lifestyle you can look for that might create a better or healthy environment for you in all sorts of different facets. And, and it's out there, and it's possible. And, and I've been very lucky to to be able to grasp onto that and, and take that by the horns and, and, and live it. So that's, it's fantastic for sure. Yeah, there's one thing you touched on, though. I don't think uh, luck had a lot to, to do with it. It's basically you taking action and, and pursuing what it is that you actually wanted to do in life and being consistent on a persistent basis to make that actually a reality and be able to make uh, you know, a comfortable living or a good living uh, doing what it is that you love to do and living in places that you love to live, uh, places that it's, you know, uh, like behind me where it's sunny, it's beachy, and there's water all the time and just a, a, an amazing environment. You come up to Canada, I believe you're at your uh, family cottage right now up in the uh, up in Ontario, but, you know, you get to, to come back to Canada and then uh, head back you know, it's going to get cold here very soon. So you get to head back to the uh, tropical weather and enjoy that. Yeah, no, no, definitely. And, and, uh, and I love that. I, I've grown up on the beach all my life. I, I love the sun. You know, a lot of people know that the sun's not, not great for you and cover up, but I've been, it's kind of my vice if there's anything else going on. And, 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 and I live for that stuff. And, and you're right. I, I've been very blessed to be able to pick and choose and, and, and decide what I want to do and where I want to go. That's fantastic. So it, uh, it works, it works really well from my perspective, but, uh, but you know, I get to interact with a lot of vacationers, a lot of tourists who come down and we have a lot of talks about all this stuff. And, uh, and so they, they love it all. It's fantastic. Okay. Yeah. Sorry. Uh, I was just instructed by somebody that my, uh, I might be, my voice might be a little bit too low, so maybe I'm not talking loud enough. So, um, let's just acknowledge some of the guests that we have on today. Uh, Margaret's on, uh, Chris Miller. Hey, Chris, how you doing? Andy Lockwood, my friend from, uh, New Jersey. How you doing, Andy? Trevor Rousel's on from, uh, New Brunswick. How you guys doing? So I'm on with, uh, Paul German. He's a, uh, what is your exact title other than being one of the luckiest <laughs> guys in the world? <laughs> That's, you know, I had that question asked me today. We were talking about developing a new website for what I do. And, uh, and as we chatted, we realized there's not really a definition of, uh, of what I do. Again, right, right now, I'm very lucky. I'm a professional photographer. I, I, that has been a big part of what I've done in the past, um, being out on expeditions and traveling the world and doing different things. So I'm doing that in Costa Rica. So I, I'm living in Costa Rica right now. Absolutely fantastic place from all, all different aspects. Um, but I ended up going to Costa Rica on a real estate gig and a business consulting gig. So okay. what, what I do, I tend, to, I tend to work within the sort of leisure lifestyle, the travel tourism industry, and, and just more consulting, but um, grasping onto different things as they come along. So it's, uh, there's no real definition, but uh, I'm lucky. I, I do agree. I admit that, but it's, uh, everybody can have this life if they want, for sure. That's right. So uh, are you actually doing uh, working for any resorts down there specifically right now or you're just doing your uh, photography and uh, some odd consulting contracts that come up? Exactly. That's what I'm doing right now. I live in Costa Rica. I do my professional photography business or I'm developing it right now as we go. Um, as I say, I've done that for many, many years. And uh, so that's, that's what the next year is going to be all about is doing my photography business and, and really enjoying one of the greatest passions that I have um, for, for once, um, making some good decisions, doing some more traveling and doing some expedition photography and some other things down there. We're working on developing the whole business plan from the websites and the social media side of things. And, uh, we'll get that up and running soon, but, uh, it gives me a chance to travel. I got very lucky with my photography. I, I was in Venezuela and Colombia four months ago with some clients leading them through the Orinoco Delta, which is the, wow. the, the jungle, the Amazon basin. And, and then Venezuela, and I got to uh, got to spend some time with three different um, communities, tribal communities there, and different areas, and uh, actually spent some time with 
one group of, of people in, deep in the heart of the jungle who had who'd only seen sort of outside people once in their life before. So that was, it was a life-changing experience for me. Um, and, uh, and it takes, but it, it really takes you back because I constantly talk about, I mean, we all look at the world around us and it's a very busy, complicated world, right? With you know, our technology and the things we have to do. And so one of the things I love to do and I love what I, where I live is we simplify things. I remember selling everything in Vancouver and moving offshore with six bags, yeah. two, two bags of dive gear, two bags with a laptop and some clothes and simplifying that and feeling that whole weight just, just disappear and go away and go, ah, oh, we're pretty simple now. And then I live that life for a while. And then I go down to this community of people who live in the middle of the Amazon, in the middle of nowhere. And I thought my life was simple. <laughs> well, their life is so simple. They run around with smiles on their faces all day long. They have to eat. They have to drink. Yeah. And, you know, they have to have shelter. But other than that, that's what life's all about. So it was, uh, it was pretty life-changing. So some lucky, lucky things happening for sure. I, I can just imagine. Actually, I, just, I can't even imagine what that was like, you know, encountering people who have only ever seen outsiders once in their life. And um, when I travel as well, I try to get into the uh, local communities, the local habitat, get, sort of get off the touristy route to see how people actually live. And you know what? I see a lot more happier people with a lot less some of them with just barely a shanty to live in but they're always happy they're always smiling they're always laughing because life is so simple to them it's you know we don't they don't have all the trappings that uh we get we get here in the western world you know getting mired down in debt and then having to you know keep a job that you hate or or stay working at something that you actually hate because you need to pay off the debts that you've incurred over time or you know these people are just living that happy lifestyle and they're just you know it's there's so much peace in places like that until obviously you weren't down in venezuela during the unrest were you where all the social unrest you were you uh, we don't need we don't need to go into that we're, we're on a happy topic right now okay. yeah and as, as, long as, you, as long as you weren't, well as... Uh, weren't uh involved in any of that or get get wrapped up in uh any of the nastiness but uh you, you made it out so i guess it was okay yeah venezuela is in a tough time right now and we and you know it, it, it's really hard in the country it's a beautiful beautiful country and uh and the people are suffering immensely um for for all sorts of different reasons it, and uh it, it's really unfortunate to see that but but what you said is absolutely right you know the world the world doesn't necessarily have to have a billion zillion different things to make themselves happy. I, I was down in Costa Rica doing a photo shoot for um, a, a group of people doing some community service, and we were painting a recreation center for this small village, this pueblo, and uh, and literally um, these three boys played with a cardboard box about a foot high and a foot wide, and all they were doing was running it back and forth across the floor and laughing their heads off for about an hour and a half. But a lot of us stopped to watch that. I was photographing it because, yeah. and so I have this really boring photograph of two boys holding a cardboard box, which I want to show to everybody, yet everybody looks at it going, uh-huh, it's two boys in a cardboard box. That's pretty static, pretty boring. Yeah. But to, to tell the story of exactly what you said is how do we make ourselves happy? How do we simplify things? How do we you know, take ourselves out of the box and play with the box and see what happens? These guys ran around just pushing it across the floor. There was nothing else involved. They would one would push it the other one way, the other would push it the other way, and one would fall over. And it was the funniest thing in the entire world. So that when you when you can experience some of that stuff, like you said, when you go away, or or people who go away and do community service, or or get involved a bit more as they travel in 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 things that are going on, you pull out great rewards that. Are great are, that I think really um, are intrinsic and go inside of you that you can learn from, but you can also take home to your daily life, and that's that's one of the huge blessings of traveling and and, and moving away from your comfort zone a little bit, but also uh, but also even living in different locations. And I think you know, living in Costa Rica, having been in Belize and and many other places, I, I don't move because it's the glory of the beach. I move because I honestly and sincerely love cultures, languages, and want to get to know. Um, you know, local people. Yeah. There's a lot of expat. There's a lot of expats all over the world, and expats are people who move from their home country, right. who 
you know, we'll go down to another country and you'll see them all sitting at the bar, the Canadian bar with a whole bunch of Canadians talking about Canada exactly. day in and day out. And, and it's kind of like, guys, you know, like we're going to import some Canadian beer and we'll just be, we might as well be back in Canada. What? So you, yeah, get you know, an experience it's great to be able to. And, uh, and uh, with the people and uh, spend time with them doing you know the things that they do and as opposed to just hanging around. Uh, and I, I noticed that when I was down in the Philippines, I was down twice each time for a month. And uh, you can see the congregation of the Westerners uh, in a bar where they're actually hanging out and uh, drinking together or whatever. You know, it's a weekly thing. You know, once a week they get together. Um, but it's for there, for that particular one, it wasn't every single night. But uh, you can definitely see it there where they sort of conjugate and just to, uh, I guess it's a comfort zone or whatever it is. Um, or that, that feeling of home by being with people that uh, come from the same place. I'm not exactly sure, um, something like that. But uh, so let's talk a little bit about how you're supporting yourself right now. So you're doing the photography. Are you selling your photos to like journals or magazines or just the tourists? What do you, how do you support yourself with the photography? Well, that's a good question. <laughs> <laughs> um, you know, no, it's, uh, it's, I'm in a transitional period, I, I, you know, and that's, that's not a scary thing, although it can be very scary, a transitional period where I'm, I'm moving as well away from, um, albeit not corporate world, but, but um, intense work scenarios where I, I've created some revenue by running resorts, general managing resorts for a long time, working seven days a week, 24 hours a day on call, basically. Um, on private islands and different other places, gorgeous, gorgeous places. But work is still work, you know. It's funny. I had a a guy, Jack Lippa, who's a harmonica player, great harmonica player out of Chicago. And I went up to him one day in Belize at Crazy Canucks. You may have been there down at the resort that I ran. Yeah. And uh, uh, and uh, I said, Jack, I need you to write me a song. It's like, what's up, Paul? I knew him pretty well. He's like, what's up? What do you need? And so. I just need a song because everybody looks at me and goes, oh, you have shorts and flip-flops on. Life is good. What are you complaining about? You just There's nothing to complain about. I'm like, well, you know, I work 24 hours a day, as I said, seven days a week for five or six or seven months straight before I get a day off. And, and, and it's tiring because you're working with people all day long. So he goes, oh, yeah, you know, you're right. What, what's the title of the song? And I said the title of the song is Work is Still Work, Even in Paradise. Exactly. And uh if you go if you go on YouTube and look up Jack Lippa, you can actually maybe find work is still work even in paradise. But uh, but I moved from that into this consulting job in Costa Rica, as I said, and then uh, after that, I just decided it was time for me to to do what I really love, which is my photography. And uh, so we're we're creating some revenue now through different ways, um, doing some real estate photography, some architectural photography, and some tourism sort of portraits, portraitures, and stuff down there. But uh, my true, love, my true love is still expedition photography, um, so I'm developing my expedition photography, going with people on trips, um, mm -hmm. you know, and taking photos while they're on trips, and then producing books for them afterwards, so they can have a great document of their nice. of their epic trips, um, and also getting into fine art. So, absolutely right, I'm going to be selling some of my work for fine art, for wall decorations, and hotels, and and condos, and developments, and things like that, and other people online. So, those are the directions that I'll I'll really be pushing in a little while. So, lots of fun. Excellent. So I got a couple shout outs here. Uh, my friend Jim House is, uh, is watching live from San Diego. Uh, Jason P. Jordan from nice. Germany, who's going to be moving to Italy very soon. Uh, Jason says cheers. So we got to give him a cheers, Paul. Oh, cheers. Yeah, for sure. Corona all the way. Um, and Jason wants to know what's the best way to shoot photography using a green, sheet, green screen? Well, you you make it look like you're in a beach in Hawaii. That's what I do. Yeah, no, it's not that hard actually. I mean, the green screen is is uh, you can do anything in front of a green screen because you can. It's easy to cut things out of and transport them onto yeah. something else, and you have a lot of technology to do that too, right? So, so in my experience doing green screen, um, lighting is important, even lighting, and having the screen so it's uh, as wrinkle free as possible. In my experience, because I've done some where uh, it's been wrinkled, and even though uh, I transpose an image over top of it, there's still wrinkle. I can still see the wrinkles in the images, so um, that's key. So, 
Paul, we're going to have to close it out, but I know that uh, Paul and I actually discussed, and we're actually going to do probably maybe in October, we're going to do a series. Paul's going to talk about um, what were the things that we were talking about, Paul, how you can actually uh, move offshore or live sort of that lifestyle. Like how do you transition into that? Some of the key steps, some of the things to look out for. Um, what were some of the thing, other things that we were talking about? Absolutely. No, I'm really excited about that. I've, I've been, I've been lucky to be able to do some of that as well. So yeah, we can, we'll put together a great little trilogy or something where we can talk about moving offshore, maybe why not scary to move offshore, some of the advantages of it. Um, just a question, you know, things, you, things you to your, look at. Do you do your banking offshore? I do. Everything uh -huh. is offshore for sure. No, exactly. I was going to say it's some of the things, the top 10 things that you want to look at, um, when moving offshore, because obviously, if one was to, even if you go on vacation, you want to know that if something happens, you've got some good medical care around you. You want to know that, you know, life, life these days doesn't have to flip on its head for you to do that. So it'll be really exciting to put that together. And I think it'd be really valuable to some of the people um, who yeah, are, you, you know, you, whether you they're know in the I United sense, States Paul, or here. You know what I sense from a business standpoint? You got something going on? I, uh, I sense a book and I sense a uh, information product in uh, and selling the book which leads to the information product that actually teaches people actually how they can do this themselves. So I think that's- And that's why we're I, talking you, today. You and I can connect with uh, off camera and see how we can put that together as well as uh, the stuff that you're doing, building up your photography business. I have a few ideas that I think can uh, really be beneficial for you when it comes to uh, building your business, uh, the photography business as well as the websites that sort of thing. So we should definitely connect off camera and uh, see if there's anything, uh, anything that uh, we can work together on those aspects. It's fantastic. Well, I know you got to go because you got somebody else coming and I'm really glad that you punched me a note and said you want to be on because we could talk all day long about all sorts of things. Thank I'm you. sure we could, we could go around the world and go back again. So yeah. I won't, we won't get off topic now, but I look forward to coming back on to all your viewers and uh, we'll see what else we can do. But uh, thanks again. It was a lot of fun. All right, Paul, here's a cheers to you, my friend. One more right. cheers from the Corona Lounge. All right, I'll talk to you soon. All right, guys, I'm going to uh, uh, do a quick transition here while I bring up my next guest. And let me see here. So you just have to bear with me. So I just have to Skype in my next guest. And so just hold on one sec while I do that. Well, he uh, said he was going to be available at uh, 1.30. But uh, for some reason, he's not answering his Skype. So I'll try one more time. Let's see if I can connect with him. And if not, then I will just continue on. But uh, yeah, I met Paul when... Uh, it's on a two-week vacation in Belize, and uh, what I'd like you guys to do is, if you liked uh, what Paul had to say, just definitely leave some comments, like it, share it, uh, ask some questions, and I can uh, definitely get Paul to answer those questions for you. Um, so he, I see Paul's still online. He just messaged in that uh, he's there if uh, need me to come back. Um, Actually, Paul, uh, I've tried twice to get a hold of the guy, so uh, I'm going to try. I'm going to try him one more time, and then if if I don't get a hold of him, then I'm going to connect with you again, Paul. So that we'll con we'll continue that way.
All right, so I'm calling Paul back, and uh, just hold on one sec, Paul, while I while I uh, work you back in here. Um, so bear with me for a sec, guys. I'm just uh, bringing Paul back on because the other gentleman uh, wasn't available. Um, he said he was going to be available at that particular time, but he didn't uh, wasn't there. So. There we go. So, uh, can you just get some audio from you, Paul? Hey, are you there? I'm here. Oh, yeah, I'm here. Yeah. I'm here. So, I'm back. We're good. We're good. So, uh, so now let's, uh, since the other gentleman can't, can't come on. So now actually let's talk a little bit about the, uh, the business stuff that you're working on right now. And, uh, cause I have a few ideas for you when it comes to, uh, helping out with your business. So, why don't you just tell me sort of what you're planning as far as the business goes for your photography business, um, how you're trying to position that, who your ideal target market is when it comes to selling it. Uh, just let me in on your thoughts with, with regards to the business. Yeah, sure. It's, it's, it's not an easy answer to that because I literally was talking to somebody today and their comment back to me was, go back to your desk and figure out what you want to do. <laughs> so... Um, um, but you know, one of the things that I really love and I love as we, as you, as obviously has come across is that I love traveling around and, and, and around the world and, and, uh, imagery is very important to me. I find it very powerful. So that's, uh, um, what I really want to think I want to focus on is finding ways to be able to get on board, um, vacations and trips and travels and, and tourist companies and, as, as a photographer, I have done a lot of guiding as well. So that. That comes with it, and me and my personality comes with it. But, but uh, I think there's a ni nice niche market for people who who go to places and either want to have somebody come with them full time on a trip uh, to to document it for them, so they can have a, a book and a memory, or even to hook up for a day with them if they're in a certain country and and do some photography just to to help them remember the experience and things like that. So, so that's 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 an area I'm going to pursue. So you weren't actually uh, not being the guide, but being the person who photographer they hire a guide or go on a journey and you're the photographer sort of capturing all of their experiences but you're not the actual it, guide. it can be it can be both i've okay. done a lot of international guiding as i say from antarctica to the arctic and all points in between so certainly that's possible and and i may put together some photography trips or some trips where that becomes but but what you don't want to do is, is one, was, one doesn't want to get caught in the guiding side of things and not be able to get the imagery that one wants to get. Um, a lot of times as a photographer on a trip, you need to step back and away from your clients so that you can capture them in the essence of what's going on versus standing right beside them all the time. So it, in the optimal world, it works having a guided trip and a photographer who's strictly there. It definitely costs a bit more money, so there's a different market niche for that. Right. Um, but on the other side, but on the other side of things as well, I, uh, you know, being in Costa Rica, I love the area that I'm in there, and and and, and certainly going after some local markets for real estate and architecture and and some portraitures of vacationers and some other things. That's there's a definite market there as well. Um, and maybe two separate businesses, for lack of other words, where I focus on my everyday business down in Costa Rica and then two or three times or four times a year get out to go on some trips and stuff like that. But uh, those are the things that I have to come up with and figure out exactly how it's going to work together. What are your thoughts on that? Well, I was just going to ask you, would you consider your business to be uh, the guiding and the touring like a higher end product, a higher end price point for somebody that's looking looking to hire you obviously if if you're going to be the guide and they're flying you to antarctica to not only guide them but to photographer to be the photographer that's a higher end price point but even in costa rica if someone hires you to uh go guide them and do a photo uh you know capture the events all along the way uh sort of how do you see that from a pricing standpoint you, you consider that a, a higher end product I would, it'll for, it'll for, definitely for, for me. I would I would definitely think that uh, they're getting not only a, a very well experienced tour guide who's 
been do doing this all over the world, but they're getting a world-class photographer all wrapped into one. That's a, definitely a high price point in my uh, opinion. Uh, so definitely don't try to sell yourself short. At the same time, I understand that uh, you may not be you know, have getting a, a ton of clients doing that. So looking at other sources of income at the same time, uh, doing things like creating little courses maybe for uh, how, to, how people can actually be better photographers when they're going on these expeditions using their phone, thanks to Jason P. Jordan for, uh, for this thought, but how, how they could actually take better photos using their phone when they're actually on expeditions. So maybe they're not gonna hire you, but maybe they want tips and advice from the expert in the field on how to be a better photographer while they are on these journeys and what things that they should be looking for, um, you know, to get the best shots or, you know, where should they stand, things like that. Just, you know, sort of some of that general information, but what are your thoughts on the price point and then creating some alternative uh, information products for other people who may not be able to afford your price point, but want your expertise or your information. I think it's your, you guys are all spot on who, who had sent that comment in as well is, is absolutely correct. Um, it's a definitely a higher price point because there's, there's, there's another person coming along. So uh, Paul, you have to look at the Paul, right mark. Sec. Yep. Uh, you keep talking. I just have to go to the bar to grab another Corona. Okay. But you just keep talking to the people. Sounds... I'm just going to run to the bar for a sec. Let me know when you're back because I can't see you on my computer, so I don't know if you're there or not. Okay. So uh, let me know if you're back. But that that sounds good. Um, no, it's it's absolutely correct. And and uh, like any business, we want to look at a lot of different facets. And somebody had mentioned that point, I think, and that was good. Um, it's a higher price point if I was to join a trip um, to guide or to photograph. But uh, you know, a lot of people are looking for memories because a lot of times people do trips once or twice. Um, in their life, and and so there are niche markets out there that you can do that in. I just need to find those, which is is great, and I have some contacts there. But the other point of of iPhone photography is is a very good point because as as we all know, the the, the photo the cameras rather on the phones are getting better and better and better and better and better Definitely. all the time, and that's uh, that, that's it's fantastic, but it's not because it takes away our business to a degree. Um, but at the same time, you, you can take outstanding photos and then you have your albums and all that stuff. And, and so trying to create some small courses on how to take better pictures with DSLRs or with, with, with photo phones and things like that is a great idea. And uh, I've taught a few of those before and you know, the 10 top tips. And I actually just read an article this morning, I think, or yesterday on um, people only know about 20% of their camera's capabilities on their iPhones yeah. because... Uh, there are a lot of different settings and a lot of different things you can do for that as well. So that's, that's uh, a book right that's there. That's great. And, and my, that's a book right there. Yeah. Like seriously, there you that go. Is, you that's see, that's a book, and uh, it's easy enough to get that to a number one best-selling um, book. And actually, you'd probably sell quite a few. If you guys are just joining us, I'm with Paul German, uh, lifestyle photographer guide. Uh, he's currently in Ontario, but he lives in Costa Rica at the moment, and uh, we're talking about uh, sort of. We met in Belize years ago and uh, just what Paul's been up to since then. So if you're enjoying this, like it, share it. Uh, definitely let us uh, know if you have some comments. I know Jason's just firing the comments off left and right. He's got a lot of ideas for your business as well. I do too, Paul. I think that uh, it very quickly you could be established as uh, uh, as the authority in your marketplace and be positioned in a very short period of time and having a lot of opportunity getting on a lot of media like mainstream media as well as stuff like this and just being sought after uh, for doing those high-end things but at the same time delivering products and services and information to uh, the average person so just because somebody has an iPhone that you know has a great capability doesn't mean they know how to use it so you know yourself that just because I give you a set of tools doesn't mean that you're gonna know how to build a house so you know, with that analogy, you need to have the right eye, you need to know what to look for. So there's a lot of things that you can teach somebody with, you know, even if they do have a, an iPhone, they may not hire you, but there's a lot of things that you can actually teach them 
to be a better photographer with their iPhone and, and to use the capabilities to its max. And there's a lot of value in Abs that. And there's definitely one or two books there. I definitely see a photography book and uh, just from your, from your photography all over the world. That's definitely something that uh, we could put together really quickly, probably in a week or two, just picking out uh, photographs and just you telling stories about each photograph. So there's some great stuff there, Paul. Yeah, I know. And, that, and that's, you know, I, I'm looking at some of the comments and things like that as well. And you're absolutely right. And it, it really is. And I think maybe it's just the two of us connecting, which is, uh, you know, it, it's a, it was a, it was a great timing that I happened to be sitting here when you texted in because I love, I, I, I love my photography side of things. I also love being in front of the camera and, and, and starting a few YouTube pages and things like that. And th that would be a great series, not just in Costa Rica, but in general on tips and how things work and, and all that stuff. And it might be, it might be something really pertinent. So, uh, yeah, no, thanks to Jason for throwing out all those ideas. It's fantastic. So, um, I just lost your, uh, just hold on, Paul. I just lost your, I just changed the screen, so I ended up losing your video, but your audio is still there. People are still hearing you. Um, That's more important anyways. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they don't need to hear me talk. Uh, so just give me one second. I'm just going to bring you back in here. And it's the lovely, uh, it's what you get when you run your own show. There you go. All right, so just check the audio again. There we go. All right, I think we're back, Paul. So, so yeah, so there's a lot of great ideas. There's definitely stuff that we can put together. Uh, Jason's saying, uh, what's Jason saying now? I love it when I'm not the only coach on here. Uh, there's definitely, you've got multiple books, multiple books there, lighting when using a phone. Uh, Jason loves this. Uh, shoot, a, shoot a series of videos about how to shoot great photos in Costa Rica using your smartphone. Um, yeah, you would definitely, and then right now you're in Costa Rica, so you could definitely dominate for search engine optimization for the Costa Rica marketplace, but um, I know that you want to, you know, you enjoy traveling to other places as well. But, um, but if you're going to be in Costa Rica for for the short foreseeable future, then uh, definitely uh, maximizing your website for search engine optimization for uh, adventure tourism, uh, photography, things like that in the Costa Rica market. Yeah, I can hear you. All right, well, Jason, uh, I, okay, so I was having some audio problems again with you. So um, can you just uh, talk again? So it's just the, uh, it's not, okay, uh, say something now, Paul. I'm still watching the waves okay. break so, behind you on the beach. You. Yeah, so I didn't, uh, sorry, I get switching screens between Facebook and my Wirecast. I'm trying to run the production at the same time as host the show. It's, ah, uh, it's overwhelming. For how us. many hands? How many hands? Yeah, exactly. You're doing a great job. Don't worry about it. That's that's because it's what anything goes Friday. That's right. Anything goes. We're drinking beer. We're talking shit. So, uh, actually, we're talking some exactly. great stuff with Paul German, uh, professional photographer, wildlife adventurer, and uh, not wildlife, but uh, not wildlife, right? Uh, adventurer, adventure guide. That's what adventure. It is, adventure guy. I like I love wildlife. I love nature. It's all part of the journey, so that's for sure. Yeah, so I think there's some definitely uh with you just starting out on your website, starting out on your business, I think there's some uh some key stuff here that you can take away from you know, I'm glad that we connected that I was able to help you out on the sh on the show. I'm glad that you're connected that uh 
you know, you entertained the audience and gave them some great stuff. But uh, hopefully you can take away from this stuff and maybe we'll connect offline to help you out with your books or any other uh, business stuff that we can, that I can help you out with to, you know, make sure you're steering in the right direction and get you there, um, accelerate your authority because that's sort of, that's what I do. That's what I focus on is helping be, people build their authority through a variety of different strategies, one of them being uh, helping them become a best-selling author, and the other is uh, creating content and websites that are going to generate uh, traffic and leads and opportunities and uh, creating additional sources of revenue. So I think all of that applies to you, Paul. <laughs> What's your budget? <laughs> so yeah, so I was going to say, you know, it's fantastic. See, Jason already wants to know, I saw him, what are the three tips I can give right now? Well, watch my video, read my book, and then get and book me into a talk at your local rec center. So there are my three tips right there, um, and, and just, because it's and, always on the go. Tell Jason, tell Jason to wait until he's in Italy first, because then, yeah, have him fly you to Italy and talk in Italy. No problem. We can walk around Rome all you want. I've got some great places there. It's fantastic. But have you been, uh, you been to Italy? But no. I have been to Italy, yeah, Rome and Florence, Venice, and a few different places. It's a, it's a great spot. It's, uh, I really, really enjoy it. Uh, a lot of my friends, unfortunately, had a lot of people impacted by the earthquake. That was just there a little while ago, so that was pretty, pretty tough on, on a lot of people as well. But, uh, but yeah, no, you know, it's, I've always been an entrepreneur. That's one of the things that I've been lucky to do all my life. Um, I, I was a stockbroker for six months when I got out of university, and I loved the game, but I didn't like the I didn't like the the aura around it all, and so yeah. I moved back into tourism, and and I've been there forever. And as an entrepreneur, you get to make your decisions, and part of you know part of the fantastic thing there is these days, as we've moved from a, an era of book reading and writing on paper, is the technological side of things, where we all can share information, we can all use our expertise that we have to work together to help each other grow in business and, and, and contacts and, and, and all those things to be successful. And, and, you know, the great people out there who love doing that, love helping each other out, um, um, win on all sides of the coin. So I have no budget, but I know you're still happy to help me out because, you know, you just want to see me succeed. And that's what author the authority accelerator wants to do, right? Yeah. No, I'm well, kidding. But, uh, yeah, so sometimes I'll work for free trips and, uh, Ah uh, yes. Room, room and accommodation for you know anything for a vacation, a working vacation. Exactly. See, we all have to get away once in a while, but uh, but no, it's, that's it. I mean, as an entrepreneur, you got to make all these decisions that you're talking about, and you have such great knowledge on. And uh, it's hard. It's hard to take the jump and commit to it, whether it's financially or whether it's saying this is what I want to do um, for the next two, three, four years, or whatever that might be. But uh, but the rewards are fantastic, as you know, and a lot of your cohorts know, and a lot of your the clients and you know and stuff. You do your own thing, and you you can go on vacation when you want to, or you can come up with unique and dynamic ways, and nobody's going to tell you it's not the right thing to do. And you can experiment, and you you can take a left turn or a right yeah. turn and see what happens. And if it doesn't work, you can come back to decide. So, you know, entrepreneurialism is all about the cans, the cans, the cans, and the cans, and you know. Um, Everything doesn't always work, but that's where we learn from, right? As you know, and, and uh, we learn and we keep growing. So I'm really lucky to be able to do that all my life. And, and I had my photo business in Vancouver for a long time, and, uh, but now I'm going to restart it again. And uh, as you guys are all saying, I'm restarting it actually in the age of digital when it used to be slide photography. I'm yeah. you know, aging myself and dating myself there. So it is a, it's really a whole different business model than it used to be. And so that's that's where it becomes really interesting. So, uh, have you investigated selling um, your photos to uh, the online companies that sell like uh, stock photography? Like uh, I definitely. I mean, like stock. I, uh, stock. You know, those stock companies, like Shutter, Shutterstock, and places like that. Have you yep. investigated that? You got it, and that's absolutely correct. No, it's it's a great it's a great thing to do it is a focus thing to do so if you want to be a stock photographer you need to shoot a lot um you need to come home you need to edit and you need to tag your pictures and get them up because obviously if you just put a gorgeous picture of a palm tree and go palm tree yeah. you're shutting yourself out if you want to tag them with as many tags as you possibly can so um it's something i'm looking into uh it allows you to shoot 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 tag 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 edit tag and get them up there 
Um, but certainly it's a way to create revenue and it's certainly it's a way to, to bring some checks in without, without even expecting it. And that's, uh, but it's a lot of work and you really need to de dedicate yourself. Like to the shooting doesn't sound like a lot of work, but the editing and the tagging, uh, the investigating all the tags and things like that, I think that would be where all the work comes in. And that's actually part of, part of my acceleration, uh, authority acceleration formula is 1, 10, 100. You create one hour of content, you spend 10 hours distributing it, and you do that consistently, persistently for 100 days. So if you're shooting for an hour and creating all of that, creating that content for an hour, you're gonna be spending at least 10 hours doing tagging, editing, distributing it out through the internet world to drive traffic, to generate leads, and you need to be doing that uh, for no less than 100 days continuously. And, it, you know, so one hour a week shooting the content, 10 hours a week creating the content, but you do that for at least 100 days. So um, it can be very time consuming if you have other jobs or you have a real job or you have something that you're doing on a regular basis, you know, eight hours a day. It can actually be time consuming, but that's what separates entrepreneurs and people that are driven from the people that just want the nine to five job is they're willing to do what it takes in order to make it happen. Yeah, you're absolutely, absolutely right. And that's, you know, ironically enough in my business, and I think everybody out there knows that from one sort of side of the coin or the other, is nobody wants to pay us money to take photographs. They don't understand why I'm charging X amount of dollars for an hour and a half that I just spent taking pictures with the family for yeah. let's say a vacation portraiture. That, but the, like everything else, we don't understand that. As you said, now I go back to my computer and I spend eight hours going through the editing, finding the pictures, getting them right, touching them up, resizing them, putting, saving them in different formats for print, for web, for, and offering this package back again. And so the backside of the work, as we call it, is 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 quite epic just like growing your business would be right it's yeah. the back side that you don't necessarily see which is the part that that um spends a lot of time doing and that's that that's interesting that you say that because it's so true there's so Jason, lots of Jason, work to put in Jason's so. touching on get hiring a va and from experience i have uh two or three vas that work for me uh i don't know what it's like in the photography field when it comes to the editing editing part how uh you know, finding a good VA that could edit the photographs to exact, because they would need to know exactly what you want. So from my experience in, in um, hiring VAs, you would need to actually create a, almost like a training program, a video training program, ex explaining exactly how you want things edited, how, what formats you want them in. And then when it comes to the tagging portion, you're also actually gonna have to create sort of a video, tr video training program as to, what they need to research for tagging, how how you want the tagging to be structured, things like that. So you're almost creating a course for the virtual assistant in order for the virtual assistant to do the work that to have the work done in the way that you want it done. I think it's very key because just hiring a VA and I've done this many a times, just hired a VA to do stuff who claim that they know what they're doing. But the thing is, they don't know what I want, what I know or what I want them to do unless I actually train them specifically. And I find the most effective way to do that is either doing screen sharing where I actually uh, voice over what, uh, capturing my screen as I'm actually doing it and talking to my screen, telling them exactly the steps that I'm taking and what I want them to do, or creating a training program basically so they can actually watch it and they learn how to do it over and over and over again. I think that doing something like that is probably to your advantage and then you can hire a virtual assistant who actually will do that for you for a much lower cost and it takes away all your time so then you're just focusing on actually taking the pictures and then they do all the back end work which is you know 10 times the work that it is to take the pictures. It, it, you, uh, uh, both Jason, I see you writing that, and that's fantastic. And you, and as well, you know, and it's uh, it is, it's definitely right. The hardest part, um, from from that aspect, from a stock point of view, I think that would work very, very well. Um, as I sit in my room right here that I'm in, I have about seventy thousand slides that are in boxes that at some point need to be gone through, edited, thrown out, and kept and stuff. And that's exactly what 
a, a VA or anybody, not a VA, but because they'd have to be hands-on, would, would, could help with. But, uh, but a lot of things from fine art and stuff that I might get into is really personal because it's very artistic. And so it, it's, I, find, I find it tough to be able to do that because we're all different. We all like different things. We all have a different eye for something. We all, we all look at things. Certainly there are parameters and, and there would be you know, rules if this is... If this bird's beak is not in frame, it's cut out somewhere, then we're not using it because it doesn't look right. Of course, yeah. that's, 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 or it's blurry or anything. But, uh, but I know I'm pretty sure that I could show you 10 pictures and my favorites wouldn't be the same as your favorites would be yeah. and, uh, and so on and so on. But, but you know, as, as you say, it's, it's, uh, it's definitely a great idea from that side of things as well because as we get to, if we get into stock stuff, it's, uh, it's, it's absolutely important. And, and I want to keep shooting and that's what I want to do. So. It's, yeah, uh, your, I want to travel mind. around. I want to keep shooting. That's, yeah, that's, yeah, that's what I love the most. And, and I, don't, I don't mind editing. I must admit, I come home after a photo shoot, and, uh, and I, I really enjoy looking at them. When I used to, go, uh, when I used to shoot film, we went to Antarctica, and, and I could, it was like Christmas. It was like a kid in a candy shop. I'd come home with 150 rolls of film, and I'd take them into my, into my camera store, and I'd sit for three days waiting for the phone call. And then a phone call would come, and they're like, your slides are ready. And I'd run over and get them, and I had bags and bags and bags of slides. And I'd go home to the light table that I'd made, and I'd take one sheet, and I'd lay it down. And I'd look at them through a loop, which is kind of a magnifier that you can see. And I'd see three great shots, and I'd get all excited. And I'd call to Kelly, uh, who was upstairs, come on down, come on down, you have to see these. And she would yell back going, you know what? Go through all your pictures, find the top fifteen, and then call me. I'm not going to go up and down stairs for the next three and a half days yeah. while you go through these because it was so excited to look at, right? So I love that aspect too. You, as a, as a photographer, when you shoot stuff, as a photographer, when you shoot stuff, um, you know what you're you know what you're getting to a degree, right? I mean, a lot of people always ask me what's the difference between a professional photographer and an amateur photographer, for lack of other things, and. Yeah. Um, there's not a straight. There's not a straight answer, but in general, a a, a, a an amateur photographer is taking fantastic pictures these days. They're doing outstanding work with all the cameras and all, everybody's got an eye. But they take a picture, they look at it and go, "Look, I got a great picture." Whereas a professional photographer tends to look at a scene, start flipping knobs and buttons all over the camera. They know what they want to get out of the camera before they click the camera. They take the picture and they go, yeah, exactly what I was looking for. So they can see and understand the, the dynamics of everything and sort of come up with a result, just like, just like home cooking or baking, right? Um, yeah. You know what you're going to get at the end. So, so just that, one, last, that one last question. Uh, we're pretty much out of time. So yep. Jason wants to know, is there a search tool for stock photo that would show you which terms are most searched? So is there a way to tell what people search for most when it comes to stock photography? That's a really good, that's a really good uh, question, Jason. I don't know the stock business that well, um, so I'm not sure. I'm pretty sure that you would have to be able to do that because I think part of, um, part of stock photography isn't just about what you tag, but it's also about understanding sort of the, the SEO side of whether, you know, how it's on a website, but that whole thing as well. So what are people looking for um, and what industry you're, ta you're tagging in? So that's a good question. I'll, I'll, I'll look up that one and see what I can find about stock photography. So next time we're together on your show, we can talk a bit about that and I'll, I'll see if I can get some more information because it doesn't take a professional photographer to get into stock photography by any means no. and with the high quality cameras on phones and, and people being all over the place anybody can use that as a source of secondary income if they want to as long as as you said they want to put the time in and spend some hours doing it it's, it's great little paychecks that they can come in yeah exactly well Paul I thank you so much for being on today and actually coming back on since I couldn't get hold of my second guest uh, but our time is up and we're just going just to wrap things up. But uh, definitely, if you liked what Paul had to say, please like, love, share this, uh, leave some comments. I'm sure Paul will uh, message you back. Uh, he'll, he'll reply back to you. I'll reply back to you. Paul and I are going to connect offline. We'll see what we can do to accelerate Paul's business, uh, try to get something uh, in place, hopefully before Christmas time. So maybe we'll get some books in, in the works. A photography book and maybe some how-to stuff and maybe some little courses that you could actually uh, sell to make some additional revenue. Uh, 
you know, we'll do whatever we can do to uh, help you accelerate your authority. But uh, definitely leave, uh, leave some comments if you have any questions. But uh, this is Anything Goes Friday on the John A. McCabe Show. I just want to thank you guys so much for, for joining me today. Uh, it was actually a great show. This is probably one of the best shows I've done so far. Uh, um, it's always much better when there's a guest on because you don't have to script things. I don't have to train people. It's just like free flow conversation and so much more engaging and people get so much more out of it. And uh, it was just such a great show. Uh, thanks again, Paul. And I really, uh, if you just want to stay on Skype there, we'll connect uh, afterwards and then uh, we'll make some plans for you coming back on in October but uh, for all you guys out there thank you very much for uh, being on today and uh, being part of the show and I look forward to seeing you guys next week there's not going to be a show on Monday Monday's a holiday and so I've decided not to, to conduct the show but we'll be back on Tuesday and our special guest on Tuesday is Jason Prawl. And Jason's going to talk to us about uh, how he's growing and building his business uh, shooting a doc through shooting a documentary. So he's in the process of shooting a documentary for cancer. And he's going to tell us a little bit about how he's going to use that and position it to uh, grow his authority and expertise in his particular business. And then on Wednesday, I have uh, comedian and funny man Jamar Johnson from L.A., who's also a serial entrepreneur. He's going to be on talking about his entrepreneurial journey since he left the uh, U.S. Marines and he became a comedian and sort of what he's gone through and uh, what he's been doing since then. And on Thursday, we have Hot Seat Thursday, where I'm going to be doing some live coaching with uh, Wendy Zelmer. Wendy has a uh, health... She's a registered chiropractor and she does some laser work with a specific type of laser unit and she's looking to grow her business. So we'll help her uh, see what we can do to help her grow her business. So thank you guys. That's uh, next week's show. So I'm going to shut off, sign off for now. So hope you guys have a great weekend and I look forward to seeing you guys next week. Take care. Hey, it's John McCabe. Welcome to the show.